This is A Million Random Digits, published in 1955. It's a big oversized hardcover book with a short introduction followed by 400 pages of digits. The full title is actually A Million Random Digits with 100,000 Normal Deviates. So after the 400 pages of random digits, you get 200 pages of 100,000 normal deviates, whatever that means. This is the latest video in my series about antique calculating devices. So why am I doing a book review? Well, obviously this isn't an ordinary book, like for reading. This book is meant to be used to do computations, so I guess it counts as a computing device. The book was published in 1955 by the RAND Corporation, which does scientific research contracts, mostly for the U.S. military. They did a lot of important work in the space program. They did several large-scale studies of the U.S. economy. They laid some of the groundwork for creating the Internet. And they also published a book of random digits. Now, let's just get out of the way. I'm going to spoil the ending. Eight. Actually, let's look at the beginning, too. Each of the rows of digits is numbered, so that 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is the number of the first row. Then we see the first random digit is, wait, 1? I wanted a book of a million random digits, and they start me with 1? The idea of a book of random digits is so obviously useless, but at the same time, it must be useful for something, or else nobody ever would have made it. This is a nicely made book, too. It's meant to be used. So how and why would somebody ever use this? Actually, the introduction to the second edition describes several different ways that people could have used this. People doing surveys who want to interview a random subset of the population, or even a military submarine pilot who has a basic route to follow but wants to introduce small-scale random changes to make it harder for anybody to predict their course. Actually, there's a name for that. It's called a jinking route. Actually, a few weeks ago, I watched a World Cup penalty kick shootout. They say the best strategy for the kicker and the goalkeeper is total randomness. If either of them plays according to some predictable pattern and the other one knows the pattern, then that's a huge disadvantage. So if I'm the kicker, here's what I'd do. For the rest of my career, I'm just going to start at the beginning of this book, and each time I need to take a shot, I'll look up the next digit. And whatever it says, I'll kick the ball in the spot, according to this chart. But why do you really need a book like this? Like, can't I just sort of decide at random for myself where I'm going to kick the ball? Well, you could, but the fact is, people aren't very good at choosing numbers or anything else, really, at random. People will subconsciously introduce patterns into their decisions. See, real randomness is just foreign to people. And this book is here to help. So if I kick my ball by the book, the other guy has no chance at all of predicting my moves. Uh, I hope he doesn't have the book too, though. If he's got the book too, then he'll predict the moves every time. So, are these numbers really random, if they're written down? I mean, does the very act of publishing them in a book destroy their randomness? Makes you wonder what the word random is even really supposed to mean. Like, remember this guy? I looked it up. He has a name. His name is that was random, but how could a number be random? Well, the way mathematicians talk about this, you don't say an individual number is random. When we say these digits are random, really we mean they were created by some randomized procedure. So, how did the wizards at Rand create these numbers? Well, it tells you in the introduction. They had an electric device which produced random pulses of electricity at a rate of about 10,000 pulses per second. Then they passed this signal through some circuits to produce a stream of thousands of binary numbers each second. They took those numbers and did a bunch of statistical tests on them. This is all in the book, too. They showed that there doesn't seem to be any patterns. One thing they checked is that the digits are more or less evenly distributed. That means each number 0 to 9 appears equally as often as all the other digits. In the real world, actually, random phenomena often don't have this kind of even distribution, but they have a bell-shaped curve, like, say, how tall a person is. Everybody's height is different, but it's not like every height is equally likely. There are some more likely values, kind of in the middle, and some less likely values on the outside. This is called a normal distribution. 
Sometimes when you want random numbers, you want them to be equally distributed, like those digits, but sometimes it's more useful if they're normally distributed. So the second section of the book is devoted to these kinds of numbers. They took their million random digits, which are evenly distributed, they ran them all through another formula to convert them into 100,000 random numbers which are normally distributed. These are called normal deviates or Gaussian deviates. This book seems pretty silly to most people. Actually, it has lots of funny joke reviews on Amazon. I think people have a fondness for it because it's so ridiculous and weird. But to me, as a mathematician, this book is like an alien artifact. See, math is about patterns. Patterns everywhere, all around us. We know that everything in the universe is subject to inviolable, universal, logical principles. You know, laws, rhythms, and patterns that are baked into the fabric of space and time. This is a profound beauty. It's the true nature of the universe at its most basic level has a structure and a pattern. But this thing here... These numbers were constructed specifically to have no pattern, no rhythm, no logical structure at all. If the universe is like a beautiful song, a great symphony of reason and pattern, then this book is like an obnoxious kid banging on pots and pans. It's like a truck driving the wrong way down the highway of the universe. You know, human history is full of people who stand defiant apart from their culture and say, no. I know the rules here, but I refuse to obey. I see the direction that things are going, and I'm going another way. You all do what you want, but as for me and my house, I will serve another power. This book here is a defiance, a great protest against the nature of the universe itself, a thumbing of the nose at the very idea of logic, pattern, and structure in the universe. We all know what happens to people who push against the tides. They're called fools, heretics, naive, hopeless. But history, history calls them heroes.